All right, good morning. Happy Thursday. OK, so yesterday. I finished um, lesson seven five, um, which we looked at linear inequalities and other nonlinear inequalities. And then yesterday I showed you how to solve a system of inequalities by graphing. So um, if I don't have any questions, if we don't have any, you know, thing to do, we're, I'm going to be teaching a new lesson um, in chapter. But um, I'm happy to spend some time with any questions you might have about these inequalities. So. Uh, questions? Anybody want to work a problem? Uh, Ms. Birch? Um, yesterday, I was just having <clears throat> a little bit of trouble with um, the, the step three, the graph of system um, of, of inequalities. And it was just like the shading part that I just had a little bit of trouble with. Like, yeah. I don't know. A lot of people have trouble with that. So I'm yeah. glad you asked. Um, so I haven't always taught it. You know, I've been teaching for, what, 30 years. And I haven't always taught it the same way. So it's a lot different. I, I'm teaching it a lot different than I did when I first started teaching because nobody understood it, you know. Um, so yeah, let, let's let's take let pick a problem. Let's take a look at it. Bernie, are you there? Hello? Can you hear me? All right, was anybody else having difficulties? Oh, I, I, I'm sorry, um, uh, 30, I'm sorry, 29? 29. 29. Okay, is that the one that says 2x minus 5y? Yeah. It's less than or equal to 10. And then 3x minus 2y? It's greater than 6. Let's just, let's just do the problem. All right. So the first thing I said to do was recognize what you have. So both of these are lines. And the reason why that's important is you don't want to graph a circle or a parabola or something. Um, so you want to recognize what you have. So what I said to do is just write equations. Don't worry about that inequality right now. So we're just going to write bx minus 2i is equal to 6. And we'll worry about the inequality in the second step. So the first step is graphing. And you have to decide what method you're going to graph. So if it's easy to solve for y, you slope intercept form. Y equals mx plus b. But with both of these problems, it's not easy to solve for y. And the reason why is because you have this 2x here and you have this negative 5 being multiplied to the y. So we don't want to solve for y if we don't have to. So what we're going to do, we're going to set x equal to 0. And so 2 times 0 is that. So you get negative 5y is equal to 10. So you can solve for y. So your y is equal to negative 2. So you just found the y-intercept, 0 down 2. Now we're going to find the x-intercept by setting y equal to 0. So when you set y equal to 0, it makes that disappear. And you get 2x is equal to 10 x is equal to 5, so you just found the x-intercept 5, 0. All right, so let's graph. Now, the thing that's cool about this method is you can just plot the two points, connect the points, and you get your line. So this would be 0 down 2. Got to make sure you read it right. 
this should be right five zero and you just connect the points that's the first step the second step is to decide is the boundary dotted or solid so you guys tell me should this should this line be dotted or solid Solid. Right. Why? Because of the greater than or um, yeah, that it's, line at the bottom. It's less than or equal. Less than, right? Less than or equal. So it's solid. Okay, so the next thing we do is we're gonna test a point. And I'm going to test zero, zero, as long as the graphs, and I'm going to make a little mark to show that it's above the line. So Bernie, that that's one of the key things is whatever point you're going to test, make a little mark. So, you know, where it is. So, if it works, you're going to shade it. If it's not going to work, you're going to shade the other. Side, so let, let me okay. just see what happens here. So we put a zero in for X, so that would be zero, two times zero. Mine is five times zero. And then we've got to use the inequality. Is it less than or equal to 10? Is zero less than or equal to 10? That's true. And you cannot get confused about the symbols. This is greater than and greater than or equal to this is less than, and that's less than or equal to. So if it's true, shade it. So that means he's true, 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 he's true. So instead of doing this for the next 10 years, what we do is we just color it in and say that all of those are solutions. Bernie, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, if it was false, you would not shade that. So what's that mean? If you're not gonna shade that, you would have to shade this, right? Yeah. Yeah. And let's do another one. We'll do the next one. Let me use a different color. All right, same thing with this one. I'm going to set y x equal to zero. When you set x equal to zero, you get negative two y equals six. Divide by negative two, y is equal to negative three. So we found the y intercept zero down three. Same thing over here, set y equal to zero. So you get three x is equal to six. Divide by three, x is equal to two. So you found the x intercept. Now, try not to look at the black because we're superimposing graphs on each other. So we're going to go zero down three, right to zero, and you're going to draw this graph. Okay, now, is the boundary dotted or solid? Dotted? Right. So that means the solutions are not on the line. Okay, so now we're gonna test a point and I'm gonna test zero, zero again. So I'm gonna make a little mark. And I'm substituting in this one, three times zero minus two times zero. Is that greater than six? Is zero greater than six? No, that's false. So what does that mean? That means don't shade zero, zero. Well, what does don't mean, don't shade zero, zero mean? Shade the other side. Yep, shade the other side. And now we have to figure out where our solutions are. And remember our solutions are not black because the black only works in the top one. Our solutions are not red because that only works in the second one. We have to have black and red. So can you guys see where this is? It's gonna be a solid boundary, a dotted boundary, 
And can you see where it is? It's in here. Did you guys see that? Miss Bridge. Yeah. But why was that? Um, why was the second equation uh, dotted? Okay, Again. the second the, the second was dotted because greater than. So when it okay. has a, it, when it has an equal in it, it's a solid boundary. If it's greater than or less than, it has to be a dotted boundary. I put that in your notes, right? I showed a table. And in the table, didn't I show that greater than or less than was dotted? And greater than or equal to or less than or equal to is a solid boundary. I put that in your notes, didn't I? Yeah. Okay. Let me just check. I just want to check my answer real quick. This is seven five. And this is number 29. Yeah, that's right. So it is a solid. This this is it's like a little piece of pie. It's solid and dotted, shaded like that. Okay, go ahead, Bernie. Other questions with this or anybody else? Any questions about what's going on? No, I got a better understanding of it. I mean, I really just, not that I wasn't paying attention yesterday, but I just really understood it after, like, you know, you explained it to me this time. I, I yeah, I'm throwing a lot of stuff at you. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you have to remember and recall. And so it's it's a lot to... um a lot to remember um all right you guys i just opened up the chat because i am looking at it um can you guys give me some feedback please like can i teach it okay i'm going to teach a brand new lesson on sequence and series and so it's brand new stuff um can you guys give me some feedback about this like are you guys okay to do this or are you not okay um, can you can you give me some feedback in the chat, please, about what how you're feeling about this? So I guess mainly what I'm asking is. Are you in trouble or do you need, are you in trouble and do you need more time or can you do this assignment um, without any trouble? All right. All right, if you're having trouble with this, I need you to ask me some questions. So I'm happy to work more problems, um, but I do want, if you're having trouble, I need you to ask more questions. All right, so what else are we, um, are we having trouble graphing a line? Are you having trouble graphing uh, using the, the method that I just showed. Um, are Ms. you Birch? having Yeah. Um, on 7.5, last night when I was, you know, just, I, I was looking over this and I was doing a few problems. Um, I came across number six and it's a fraction and it's like graph each inequality. Uh-huh. Um, and I don't know, it just threw me off because it's a fraction. All right, 
The first thing you should recognize about this problem is that it's in slope inter it's a line. And it's in slope intercept form y equals mx plus b. So what you have here is you have the slope and the intercept. So that's the beauty about slope intercept line is you have the slope of the line, which is the steepness of the line, and you have where it starts, which is zero, zero. So when I went over this in the prerequisite section, I said that the way you read the slope is y, it's the change in y over the change in x. So it's also known as the rise over the run. So rise, you think up and down, run, you think left and right, because you can't run up and down. So rise means up and down. Run means left or right. So when you read this number, you read it as up one, right four. If it was negative, you would read it down one, right four. If this was negative, you read it up one left four, and you can't get this mixed up. I mean, you've got to you got to know this at some point. So another way to write this would what's equivalent to one fourth would be a negative one over negative four because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So this is up one right four, up one right four, up one right four. This is down one left four, down one left four. And the starting point is zero, zero. And the starting point is the y-intercept. So that's the y-intercept, zero, zero. So all you do is do the slope in order to graph. So up one, right four. So from the point, you go up one, right four. And see how I'm out of room? That's why I had you write this one. So you could go down one, left four, and be able to graph easily. So now we look at the inequality. Is it dotted or solid? It's solid. And we're going to test a point. You can't test zero, zero because the line's going through it. So I'm gonna test right one up one. So you put it into this, your Y is one. You have one fourth times one plus zero. So is one less than a fraction? False, one is not less than a fraction. So that means don't shade him. Well, what does don't shade him mean? There he is, right? One, one. What does don't shade him mean? Not shaded. What does don't, don't shade this mean? What does it mean? Shade, shade the, the other side. Shade the other side, right. So that means all these points over here fail and all these points work. Like right one down one works, right two down two works, right three zero works, zero down four work five works, right one down three two and a half works. So uh, any point you pick over here, left one down two and a half works. Any points you pick over there are going to work. Any points you pick over here are going to fail. Okay, now while I have this up here, does anybody want to ask me any questions about it? Because I know this is what you're getting confused about, but here's the problem. I'm not from the Psychic Friends Network and I don't know what you're confused about. So unless you tell me, I can't, I can't help you because I don't know what you're confused about. So on the board up here, what are you confused about?
All right. Well, let me let me see in the chat. You're going to either say what you're confused about or say, no, you understand this. You can graph the line in slope intercept form. You know how to graph the line. You know that it's dotted or solid. And you know how to shade. If you don't know that, say something so I know what to do. Miss Birch. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't mean to go back to the, you know, graph the solution set that, you know, we just did previously, but um, could we do a problem that um, that involved the um, the three solutions for uh, 57 through like 61, yeah, the ones that you assigned us? Yeah. The thing is, though, I want to just focus on some basic stuff oh, yeah, right now sure. before okay. we like it's kind of like I want to I want to be able to stand in the shallow water before we jump into the deep end. Yeah, so break it down. Okay. I kind of want to just keep it simple right now because it seems like people are confused. And I just want to make sure that um we're okay. All right, so nobody's saying so everybody understands this. You understand about the slope. You understand about the intercept. You know how to graph the line. You know that it's solid and you know how to shade. Could we maybe do one more problem? Mm -hmm. All right, do you want to do a simple inequality like we just did, or do you want to do a system? Can we do another simple one and then jump into the system? Like I was thinking maybe three. All right, so the, like I, so this is the line and you want to decide you want to solve for Y or not. Now, personally, I don't want to solve for Y um, because I have this X, I have a negative two being multiple. I, I don't want to solve for Y. It's not easy to solve for Y. So I'm going to use that other method. So I'm just going to look at an equation. I'm going to set X equal to zero. So what do you get when you set X equal to zero? Negative two y. Negative two y equals ten. Good. So how do we solve? We divide both sides by negative two. And you're not, you guys aren't using one bar, right? Because I'm not looking closely at your work. So make sure you use two bars. And this would be y is equal to negative five. So you have zero, negative five. You just found the y intercept. All right. So now we set y equal to zero. Well, when you set y equal to zero, what do you get? When you set y equal to zero, what do you get? You just get x equals 10. 10. So you just found the x intercept 10, 0. So graph it. Now, the worst thing you could do is mix up the two methods. So this method is not slope. You do not rise and run. You do not, with this method, you connect two points. So zero down five and right 10 zero. And you connect the points. All right, now we've graphed it. That's the equation. We don't have an equation. 
We don't have solutions on the line only. We have an inequality, which means infinite solutions on either side of the line. Now, the first thing we decide, is it dotted or solid? It's dotted. Dotted. Okay. Now, you can test any point in the world that you want to, as long as it's not on the line. We already know the ones on the line don't work. That's why it's dotted. So the, the line, the, the numbers on the line don't work. So zero down five doesn't work. Right 10 zero doesn't work because the line's dotted. So we're gonna test zero zero. So we say is zero X minus two times zero, is that greater than 10? Is zero greater than 10? Zero greater than 10? So no. the bigger, that's greater than, right? Is zero greater than 10? False. So what does that mean? You shade it the other way? Yeah. Right. It means zero, zero doesn't work. Mm. It means zero, zero is not a solution. And it means don't shade it because shading means solutions. So don't shade it. In fact, erase it and shade the other side. Let me check the answer. It's number three. And that's correct. All right, go ahead. I'll take questions. Give me some feedback, please. Yes, you get this. No, you don't. I understand this. Yeah, I understand it now. Yeah, I get okay. it. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna let you go in a minute, but let's do a system problem. So this is just, that that was just a simple inequality. And when you solve a system, it's gonna be more than one inequality. All right, so somebody pick a problem for a system. So that's problems 27 on, pick a problem. Could we start off with uh, 31? Okay. So we have y is greater than 2x minus 3, which is the line. And we have what? y less than negative x plus 6. Now, let me tell you something. Do you want to know what a lot of people's problems are? They're getting these symbols mixed up. So does everybody understand this is greater than and this is less than? Or do you promise me you're going to get this is greater than and less than, right? Hello? Come on, say something, Brandon, Georgina, yes, Adrian, I understand. Alex, Arelli, huh? And I said, yes, I, I understand. Greater than and less than, right? Yes. Okay. So, and this is also a line. All right, so let's look at the equations. Y equals 2X minus 3 and Y equals negative X plus 6. Now, these are already solved for Y, so we're going to use slope-intercept form. So the slope here is up to right one, up to right one, because two is written as two over one, right? 
What's another way to write two over one? Negative two over negative one. Right. So this is up to right one, up to right one, or down to left one, down to left one. And our starting point is going to be negative three or zero down three. So zero down three, and I'll be, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. Okay. If you don't learn anything from me this year, if you learn how to graph a line, that's super important to me. Okay. I don't know why the algebra one teachers aren't stressing this, but students who leave algebra one need to know how to graph a line. So if you know how to graph a line, that's great. Bernie, do you have your hand up? Right. Sorry. That's okay. So we go up to right one, up to right one, and you need like three or four points. Um, you could go down to left one if you wanted to, um, but just get a representation of the line. All right, here we go. Is the line dotted or solid? Dotted? Yep. That means the solutions cannot be on the line. Okay, now we're going to test a point. And you know that I like to test zero, zero when it's an option. So now we take our Y greater than two times zero minus three. Is zero greater than zero minus three is negative three. Is zero greater than negative three? Yes. True, because zero's to the right, and think of the number line. Negative three is over here, right? And zero's over here. Yes, so zero's greater? Yes. All right, so what does that mean about zero, zero if it's true? What does it tell you about that point right there if this is true? Solution. It's a solution, right? It's a solution. So shade him and all his friends. And that means all these guys over here are not solutions. All of these guys are solutions, these ordered pairs. There's millions of them, infinite many of them. So all of these guys are solutions. And all of those guys on the other side of the line are not solutions. Okay, now we go to the next problem. That's also solved for Y, so we're going to use slope intercept form. So what's the slope, you guys? <clears throat> slope? Is it negative 1 over 1? Yes, it's negative 1 over 1, but how do you read it? Rise over the run. How do you read it? Down one, right down one. Down one, right one. Down one, right one, down one, right one. Or it could be one over negative one. How do you read that one? Up one, left one. Right, up one, left one. And your y-intercept is zero, six. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you go zero, six, that's your starting point. And you see how I'm already off the graph? I don't want to go up one, left one. I want to, I want to use this one, but I'm, I'm having you write both so that if you are on the edge of the graph, you don't, you're not forced to freak out. So I'm going to go down one, right one, down one, right one, down one, right one, down one, right one. And I'm going to draw my line. And by the way, this guy had positive slope. That's why he was rising. And this guy has negative slope. That's why he's falling. And that gives me confidence 
that I'm doing this right. This guy should be rising. This guy should be falling. All right, now I'm going to test zero, zero again. Don't look at the black. We're just looking at the green line. So the y value is zero. Is that less than negative zero plus six? Is zero less than six? Is zero yes. less? Okay, what does that mean about zero, zero now? That you shade you zero, shade, zero? You shade, exactly, you shade zero, zero. So if you shade zero, zero, aren't you shading all these guys over here? Right? You're not shading the guys on that side of the green line. You're shading the guys on this side of the green line. You're not shading those guys. Oh, and by the way, this should be dotted, right? The green line should be dotted too. Yes, no? Uh, yeah. Okay, so now where are your solutions? Are your solutions down here in the green? No, the green ones only work for the second one. Are your solutions up here in the black? No, no. where are your solutions? I can't play right now. In the black and green? Right. So this is going to be dotted. This guy's going to be dotted. And you're going to shade where you see black and green. So what that means in the red, if you can see the color, what that means is that those red ones work in both. And those are the solutions to our system because the red points work in both. All right, can you guys give me some feedback? Um, Brandon, Brandon, Bernie, Adrian, Alex. I get it now. Yeah, it seems pretty simple now. Uh-huh. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Yesterday, we didn't have a lot of time to work um, in the math wizard teams. In fact, we just went in there and you introduced yourself. Um, but what I want you to do is I want you to go into these new teams. And um, if you weren't here yesterday or you didn't meet people, make sure you meet everybody. And um, you're going to... We'll show your video. You're gonna you're gonna work some of these problems. You decide what problem you're, you're gonna work as a team. So let's say I'm working with Edwin and Georgina. Um, if they've already done one through ten, then we might have to do you know number eleven together. So you're gonna you're gonna be working problems that that your team hasn't worked. Okay, and you're gonna work problems from the lesson. So honestly, there's really nothing more I can do. I've done a lot of examples. You guys are going to have to just struggle through this. You're going you're to have to um, work with your team. Two heads are better than one um, to try to get your questions resolved with this. Sound good? Yeah. All right. So class is over at 1045. We're going to report back here at 1040 in case there's anything that I need to address that everybody's having problems with. So you got a lot of time. You have almost well, 40, 40 minutes, 40, 45 minutes. So um, I'm gonna come check in on you. Uh, make sure you ask me questions to get things cleared up. Um, I did wanna teach a new lesson today, but um, it's brand new stuff, brand new concepts. Um, you will have an exam on just this section so you want to make sure you know what you're doing. Make sure and ask me if you have any questions. And I'll be taking attendance in the math wizard teams. All right. I'll see you in your teams. I'll see you back here at 1040.
All right. So I told you that the next test was going to be on seven five only, um, but I forgot about seven four. So remember, seven four was solving systems of um, it was systems of equations. So nonlinear, where we use substitution, and then we also stacked them and used addition. So seven four will be on there also. Also, for those of you who are done with the odds, which I know some of you are, um, I'm, I haven't posted this yet, but I'm going to also assign the evens because I just feel like this is really good practice. And so I'm going to be assigning the evens that go with the odds. All right. So if you if you do these problems, the odds and the evens, you should be ready to go um, for this part of the. I have not announced the exam, um, but it'll be next week sometime. So. Um, yeah. All right. Anybody want to ask me any questions about anything? Anybody need me to do a problem? Nope. All right, then you guys have a good day. Class is over for the day. Make sure you do the problems. Okay. Um, practice does not make perfect. It's perfect practice that makes perfect. So hopefully when you do the odds and you check your answers, um, you'll have a high level of confidence that you're doing them correctly. And then we're going to be doing the evens also. All right. All right. You guys have a good day. Have a good weekend. I won't see you until Monday. Thank you. Bye guys. Have a good day. Thank you. Ms. Have a good weekend. You're welcome. Bye guys. Have a good day.